Chapter 4, Embracing the Ache of Loneliness. This chapter is dedicated to the lonely, even the lonely who have partners. Have you ever felt really lonely? I mean, that kind of loneliness where you lie awake at night and your chest pulses with soft ache and your heart slowly burns as some persistent thought insists you're destined to go through this lifetime alone, that you're never going to find the one or even anyone in whose loving arms you'll finally experience home. That's home with a capital H. One late autumn many years ago, I was canoeing in the Canadian Northwoods when I heard a faraway loon's evocative cry float despondent across the still dark surface of a vast lake. The haunting sound of its longing sank into me like winter sadness. I've never forgotten it. It's the sound my heart whispers out through my chest when I feel my aloneness severe. Have you ever experienced this kind of loneliness? You might have experienced it lying next to someone maybe even your husband or wife, that kind of loneliness can be torture. To be so close to a bliss that refuses to let you in. Uh, quick break. I'm reading chapter four of Choose Her Every Day or Leave Her. Uh, the book is available on Audible and Amazon and all the places. But I am going to be reading these chapters on this YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Follow along with me on this journey over the coming months. There's 60 plus chapters, easy, brief, short chapters. Um, the subtitle is a guide for your journey through the transformational fires of love and intimacy. My name is Brian Reeves, Brian with a Y Reeves. I'm the author. And on this journey, I'll be taking you into the behind the scenes stories of writing this book and deeper into the teaching lessons. So let's dive in, shall we? Back to chapter four. We've all felt such deep loneliness, regardless how or to what degree. It's a byproduct of the human experience called separate. I've felt it plenty, both alone and in bed with my partner. I felt it last night alone. It visits me for various reasons. For years, I've distracted myself from facing whatever that ache really is by pursuing unhealthy relationships, engaging in empty flings and empty promises desperate online dating, medicinal masturbation, and eating sugar, lots and lots of sugar. I've made girlfriends responsible for fixing it once and for all. As mere mortals who don't have such powers, I would blame them when it showed up again. I've also drowned myself with work, arrogance, pornography, denial, even spiritual seeking, all so that I would have neither time nor energy to acknowledge its gnawing presence. And the presence I'm talking about is the, the gnawing presence of loneliness, of feeling separate from the world, of feeling disconnected from the world. Uh, Terry Real, the uh, psychologist who works, specializes in working with men in intimate relationships, says that the original wound in men is disconnection. We are disconnected from our, our bodies, our emotions, our feelings. Uh, and then expected to show up in the world and with our full presence. And of course, that doesn't quite uh, work out so well <laughs> for us, does it? Uh, by the way, the original wound for women is disempowerment. So I'm reading a chapter on the ache of loneliness. Uh, I'm talking about my journey of learning to embrace loneliness. And I, me personally, I, I experienced the most profound loneliness when surrounded by people. Fascinating that, isn't it? And of course, the most painful loneliness is to be sleeping right next to an intimate partner that I can't connect with. Back in. Since last summer though, I've been cutting out most of that distracting behavior, except that sugar. As I discover ever more what it means to honor my life as a more core masculine man, I realize I must turn into and face this loneliness that stalks me like death and that I can trace back to my earliest memories, not to conquer it, but to embrace it and explore whatever wisdom must lie beneath its menacing mask. To feel the pain of loneliness is to feel death's embrace. So I've decided to get intimate with it, to invite it in and ask it questions. I want to know it, not every day all the time, for I far more enjoy being my enthusiastic, playful self. But when it clearly wants to come in, I allow it. When it shows up, as it did last night, I breathe with it. 
and I ask it, what does it believe? And this is what it tells me. It says that I'm unlovable, not good enough, unworthy, forever separate from everyone else, from life itself. And therefore, no one will ever truly touch or know my true heart. I'm destined to be alone for all my days, and there's nothing to do about it. Ouch. That's the story my loneliness tells about me. Intellectually, I know it's insane, this reclusive pain. Though it might be right about the last part, I might be destined to live out my days alone. How can I know? Anyway, I just breathe with it. I give my chest freely to this ache and let it weep without trying to make it go away. I even agree with it, thinking silently. Okay, fine. So this is basically how it's always going to be. Me alone in bed at night and through my days forever. So be it. And I let it cry. I watch this passing weather, feel it soaking me through to my bones, and I breathe. Speaking of passing weather, boy, that sun is just coming in and out the play, ain't it? Within a short time, a few minutes, it dissipates like a dark storm cloud that has shed all its rain. The sun may not immediately return, but the ache settles and I feel my body whole again. I notice I'm cozy in my warm bed, deeply grateful for the life I got to live today. I think of all the amazing friends I have and the brilliant, beautiful women I've been fortunate to know and experience love within this lifetime. At this point, even though I'm alone, and by the way, I wrote this before I met my wife, I wrote this particular chapter. Uh, at this point, even though I'm alone, my hope will often flicker as the sweet tasting thought quickly returns that there must be a good, a good woman on this planet right now dreaming up someone just like me. Turns out that was true because I met my wife. I don't know. I'm not sure when I met her after writing this, but it was true. She was dreaming me up. <sighs> These flies. Even through my doubting, I can feel her presence. And when she shows up, I think to myself, this ache will surely never return. Of course, I know better now. So I remind myself that it probably will return in a moment of sudden disconnect and fear. Such moments happen in partnership and without. Hopefully, facing and embracing this loneliness now will help me breathe into it and not make it anyone's fault. After all, it's just weather passing. Insane weather, perhaps, still just weather. Then, as I lay thoughtful and alone in my bed, my awareness quickly fading, I turn excitedly towards my nighttime dream team, curious to experience whatever epic adventures they've prepared for me this night. They never let me down, and I sleep. And I close the chapter with a quote from Byron Katie, who says, if you want to get rid of something, you must first allow it to flourish. Ooh, that's deep. Oh boy, that sun is intense. So that's chapter four, embracing the ache of loneliness. Come choose your everyday or leafer. That has been one of my most important practices throughout my mm, post shutdown, post emotional shutdown life. I was in the military. The military uh, did masterfully what culture was already doing to me as a man, which was, as I said earlier, like disconnecting me from my body, from my emotions, feelings, from my felt sense of aliveness, disconnecting me from my uh, enlivenment. And it's often a trap that we, men particularly, but women too, fall into where in avoiding the unwanted feelings, what we don't understand is that we're also shutting down our access to the wanted feelings. It's like, you know, our, our range of emotion is in here and we think we just want to increase the positive wanted, which I really mean wanted feelings and emotions. We don't realize that we increase our, our emotional capacity on both sides, both wanted and the unwanted. You, we don't get the wanted without the, 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 the unwanted, right? We don't get to feel true joy if we can't also experience true sadness, right? If we don't know how to grieve and feel the depths of our losses, and I don't mean big losses necessarily like death and things like that, but I mean breakups. I mean losing jobs or changing jobs, even, even losses we choose, 
because we're gaining something better, there's still a loss. And if we don't know how to feel the sadness of that very quickly, our joy at the new thing also hits its wall. So learning to embrace the ache of loneliness. That's chapter four. Chapter five coming up next in the next video. Healing sometimes means learning to live in peace with the pain. Again, subscribe to this channel if you want to come along on this ride with me. I'm Brian Withrow Reeves, Brian with a Y, Reeves, and I'll see you in the next video.